Yatak is a lightweight Python library that provides an easy way to generate HTML XML documents. In this video, we will walk you through the basics of Yatak and show how you can use it to create a simple web page like this. HTML is an essential part of web development as it provides the structure and content of web pages and works in conjunction with other web technologies such as CSS and JavaScript to create interactive and dynamic web experiences. HTML and Python have some major differences and for someone used to Python, HTML can be a bit of a hassle to learn. One of the main differences between HTML and Python is that HTML is not a proper programming language. It is a markup language. <laughs> it is designed for creating documents with structured content, such as web pages. While Python is a general purpose programming language that can be used for a wide range of applications. Another difference is the syntax. HTML has its own syntax for creating tags and attributes, while Python uses a more traditional syntax with keywords, functions and variables. One quirk of HTML is that it is not a strict language, meaning that it does not require all tags to be closed, and it can tolerate certain errors and or inconsistencies. This can make it more forgiving than Python, which is a strict language that requires correct syntax and strict adherence to programming conventions. On the other hand, Python has its own quirks, such as the need for correct indentation, which can be confusing for beginners. Python also requires more specific syntax for creating variables and functions, which can take some time getting used to. I've never talked to a snake before. To get started, let's first install the Yatak library using pip. Open your command prompt or terminal and enter pip install yatak. Let's create a python file and import the library. The doc class in yatak is the main class that we will use to create our HTML document. Now let's create an instance of the doc class and add a title to our web page. The method asis is used to input a string to the document without any form of escaping, because the less than and bigger than characters are used to open and close tags in HTML. The doc type HTML declaration is not strictly necessary in an HTML file, but it is recommended to include it, something related to informing the browser what type of file it is handling. Now we can create an HTML tag, create a head tag inside the HTML tag, and finally we create a title tag inside the head tag. Now let's add some content to our web page by adding a paragraph tag. Here we are adding a body tag to the HTML structure and then adding a paragraph tag inside the body tag with the text hello world. Finally, to get the result of our document, we use the method getValue. This results in a one-liner that can be saved to an HTML file and works just fine. As I'm using VS Code here, I installed the live preview extension, so that you can see the changes to a web page instantly as they are made. Simply right click on the index.html file and select the show preview option. Or you could simply open the HTML file with your preferred web browser. Here we can see the content of the generated file, but it is really hard to read without proper indentation. Luckily for us, Yata can do indentation too, with the indent function. Now it looks much better. But you can see how the HTML code is still much more bloated with all those opening and closing tags when compared to Python. To use Yatak properly, you still have to learn about all the different tags that are available in HTML. I just find it way more convenient to do it with Yatak. Some tags like IMG or BR are self-closing, meaning that they do not have a closing tag. In Yatak, you can create self-closing tags using the doc s tag method. Here an example of how to create a self-closing img tag using yatag. 
You can create ordered and unordered lists using the OL and UL tags respectively and add items to the list using the line method. As we add more content, we can see that our page is pretty ugly. To make it less so, we have to use styling, which is done with a CSS file. Yata could be used to create CSS files too, with the as is or text methods, but I find it simpler to create the CSS file manually. Here we can define fonts, colors, margins and alignment for the different objects. This is for me one of the most frustrating parts as it is really hard to get things to look right. After several hours of an iterative process, I have managed to put together a simple portfolio web page, listing some of my previous projects, with embedded YouTube videos and games hosted on itch.io. You can play them directly on the web page. As there's a lot of repetition, I created some functions to simplify the embedding of elements and such. And there you have it, a basic example of how to use Yatak in Python to create static web pages. With Yatak you can easily generate HTML, XML documents in your Python code without the need for any complicated frameworks or tools, making the process much more enjoyable.